After finishing my Stitches Inspired hoodie, Stitches hoodie, link for video in the description, I've been brainstorming ideas for my next clothing project. Yeah, I've been having a little bit of difficulty deciding what exactly it is that I want to make. However, after a bit of internal back and forth. All right, people, decision time. What the hell are we making next? Okay, hear me out. Pokemon. That's a good, if totally unsurprising suggestion, but the ideas department tells me that we already have something like that in the works. So we're going to skip the Pokemon this time. Any other suggestions? How about dinosaurs? Nice, love a good dino. Anything else? I'd go with nostalgia. Something we used to watch in the ye old days of the 80s, 90s or noughties. Now that's an intriguing idea. Any more? Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. You gonna elaborate on that or? And we have a winner. Any objections? Nope. Dinosaurs. None from me. Awesome. That settles that. It's finally been decided that I'm going to crochet Shinobo Kocho's Howry. I'm just interrupting to ask a quick favor. I just realized that I've been saying Shinobo Kocho instead of Shinobu Kocho. Can we just agree to collectively ignore that for the rest of the video? Please and thank you. And you can crochet one too if you'd like because this video is going to be half tutorial and half crochet along with me and a whole lot of fun. <gasps> if you're not familiar with Demon Slayer, this is Shinobu Kocho and this is her Howry. Isn't it gorgeous? The answer is yes, which is why I'm attempting to crochet it. But before we can do any crocheting, we will need to take some measurements. So if you would like to crochet along with me, go and grab yourself a tape measure, something to take notes with, and let's get started. Whoa, okay, hang on. Let's tap the brakes for a sec because I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Before we whip out the tape measures, I think we should cement our design idea. I'm keeping the design super simple, consisting of one large back panel, two narrower front panels, and a panel for each sleeve which I'll then sew together to complete the howry. The front and back pieces will each be rectangular. However, as the sleeves of the howry flare out quite prominently, I'm going to make the end of my sleeves wider than the shoulder. We'll be using four different colors to crochet each of the pieces, white, green, pink, and black. Each of these colored sections will be different widths, but before we can estimate just how wide each one will be, we'll need to take our body measurements to determine the overall size of our garment. We're also going to be adding some details, but that part will come later on. With our design in mind, we can now begin taking the necessary measurements. The first measurement we'll take is the top of our shoulders. You're going to measure the width from one shoulder all the way across your body to the opposite shoulder. Next, we're going to measure the length of our Harry. To take this measurement, start at the top of your shoulders, measure down your body, and stop at the point where you want your howry to end. We're then going to measure the sleeve length. Start at the top of your shoulder where the seam between shoulder and torso would be. Measure from that point down your arm to where you would like your sleeve to end. The final measurement that we need to take is the sleeve circumference. You're going to take this twice, first around your upper arm, measuring from under your armpit, up and over your shoulder and back down to your armpit. Second will be the circumference of the sleeve at your wrist. This measurement will need to be wider than the upper arm circumference if you would like to achieve the flared effect. Exactly how wide you make this is entirely up to you, but just know that the greater the difference between the two circumferences, the more dramatic the flared effect is going to be. Now that we've taken all the measurements for our panels, we're going to do one more little bit of maths, and that is to divide up our panels into their colors. So our panels are going to be predominantly white, but then there's strips of pink, green, and black. My front and back panels are going to be 80 centimeters in length. So I have decided that I'm going to do white for 45 centimeters, then green for 10 centimeters, pink for 15 centimeters, and black for another 10 centimeters. Because the sleeves aren't quite as long, my sleeves are only going to be 55 centimeters in length, 
I've had to change up those measurements a bit. So for the sleeves, my white section is going to be 30 centimeters long. The green is going to be seven centimeters. The pink is going to be 11 centimeters and the black is again going to be seven centimeters. This is just sort of tailored to my preferences. I didn't really do any specific measuring or anything. I just went with predominantly white and then added some green and black that were the same height and then the pink in the middle was a little bit taller which is sort of roughly what the Harry looks like according to Google. So that's what I went with but you can change these up to fit your particular measurements but you need to do that before we start crocheting. When all that measuring is done we are good to go. So for this project I'm going to be using a four millimeter hook which is the recommended hook size of the yarn and the yarn that I'm using is this Four Seasons Marvel 8 ply. It is 100 grams per skein and it is 100% acrylic. I would prefer to use cotton for clothing if I could like I did with my previous project. However, cotton is a bit more expensive or a lot more expensive in some cases. And because I've got another couple of clothing projects in the works, I'm using cotton for those and it wasn't really in the budget to have cotton for all of them just couldn't afford that what we're going to do now is I'm going to be starting in white so starting at the top and working my way back is we're going to begin crocheting and we're going to start by making the width of our piece to do that you're going to take your shoulder width measurement that is the measurement from shoulder to shoulder for me that was 44 centimeters so I have my tape measure here 44 centimeters grab your hook and grab your yarn and this should work no matter which yarn weight and hook size you are using then we're going to create a slip knot and then we're going to begin chaining the goal of this is to chain until we reach that shoulder width measurement so I'm going to keep chaining until I reach 44 centimeters your shoulder width measurement may be smaller, it may be larger. So you're just going to have to stop and measure your chains as you go along. So let's see how many I need to do. One. So I've just done 30 chains. Now I know this isn't going to be long enough, but I just wanted to give you a demonstration of what I mean. So I've done 30 chains and then I'm going to grab my tape measure and I'm going to line that up. So 30 chains is going to be roughly 16 to 17 centimeters. So I'm just going to keep chaining, keep measuring until I reach 44 centimeters. I went a little bit too far and my chain is a little bit too long. So I'm just going to take out a few. Five and I'll measure that. And that worked out good. That was almost exactly 44 centimeters. So I did 85 chains to get 44 centimeters. And what I'm going to do is just bring this up to my shoulders to check that it's the right size. And I think we're right there. Now, like I just said, I just did 85 chains. And now I'm going to add an additional three. And the reason I'm doing this is because I am going to be working this pattern in double crochet. If you would prefer to use a different stitch, you use half double crochet, single crochet, you can either chain two or one respectively, but I'm going to chain an additional three. That means I'm chaining 88 in total. One, two, three. Now starting in the fourth chain from the hook, so I'm skipping the three chains I just did at the end there, I'm going to place my first double crochet. If you would like to do double crochet as well, we're going to start off our double crochet by yarning over, going into that fourth chain from the hook, yarn over again and pull through. At this point, you should have three loops on your hook. 
you're going to yarn over, pull through just the first two, one and two, and now you should have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over for a final time and pull through the remaining two loops. I'm going to do that again in the next stitch. I'm going to double crochet, start by yarning over, going into the chain, yarn over and pull through. You should have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two, and then yarn over for a final time and pull through the remaining two. Because I chained 85 originally, before I did those three turning chains, that means I need to do 85 double crochet down my chain. And I'm just going to continue doing those. Depending on what measurement you came up with, you're going to need to do a different number of double crochet or half double crochet, whatever stitch it is that you're doing. When you get to the end of your row, you're going to chain and turn your work. The number that you need to chain is going to depend on which stitch you're using. Because I'm using double crochet, I'm going to chain three, one, two, and three, and then turn my work. However, if you're using half double crochet, chain two, and if you're using single crochet, you only need to chain one. What I'm going to do now is continue working my rows of 85 double crochet back and forth until I reach a length of 45 centimeters. At the beginning, we measured our width. Mine was 44 centimeters, so I measured across this way. Now I'm going to be measuring length. I'm going to be measuring this way. My total length is going to be roughly 80 centimeters, but because I broke my back panel down by color, I'm going to start with the white, which I'm going to crochet out until it reaches about 45 centimeters. And like I did when I was measuring the width, I'm just going to continue crocheting. And when it starts getting a little bit longer, I'll stop every couple of rows and just check the length. that is row 43 done now I haven't done the last stitch at the moment because I'm pretty sure I'm at the right length that I want for my white stitches so if that is the case I'm going to use this stitch to change color to the green so I'm going to leave that for now but I need to measure my piece before we can continue I need it to be about 45 centimeters long that's my tape measure Okay, let's check this. Slightly over, I'm at 46 centimeters, but that's okay. I'm not too fussy on the exact length of my Harry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change color. And if you're doing double crochet as I am, you're going to change color the same way I'm going to here. But if you are using either half double crochet, single crochet, some other stitch, it will be a little bit different. So to begin your color change, you're going to use the last stitch of whatever row you've just completed. You're going to yarn over, go into the final stitch, yarn over and pull through. So you should have three loops on your hook now. You're going to yarn over again, pull through just the first two. And at this point, we will normally yarn over for a final time and finish the stitch. But instead, what we're going to do is bring in our next color, which should be the green. You're going to line this new color up behind the head of your hook. And I like to leave a fairly lengthy tail when I do this, just so I can weave it in securely later. And I know it's not going to unravel. So I'm going to line that up. Still got the two loops on my hook. And at this point, I'm going to yarn over in the new color and pull through the two loops on my hook with that. 
From this point, I'm going to continue crocheting in the green yarn. Now with the green section, I needed to reach about 10 centimeters for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tape measure once more, and I'm actually going to measure 10 centimeters down from the top. So there's 10, and I'm going to count how many rows that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a 10. Huh, that works out well. So my, my rows are about a centimeter each, roughly. So I'm going to continue crocheting in the green and I'm going to do 10 rows as I just worked out then. When I finish those 10 rows, I'm still going to measure again anyway. But at that point, we should have 10 centimeters of green and we can continue on to the pink. So I'm going to chain three, turn my work, is getting progressively harder as my piece gets bigger and then for the first couple of stitches I'm going to work over these two tail ends so the, probably the first five or so and then later on I'm going to come back in and weave them in with my needle you can do one of these methods so you can just work over your stitches or you can just weave them in I like to do both just for a bit of additional security And that is the tenth row of green done. I've left the last stitch unworked again just because I'm going to be changing colour. Before I do that, however, I'm just going to double check to make sure I have got roughly the right size for my green stitches. And that is just over 10 centimetres, so that will do. What I'm going to do now is change to the next colour which was going to be this corally color here. But on second thought, I've decided to go with the pink instead. So I'm going to exchange those. There we go. When I did my measurements earlier on, I worked out that my pink strip was going to be about 15 centimeters tall. And working off the theory that my double crochet rows are approximately one centimeter, I'm going to aim to do 15 rows of pink. However, when I get to about the 13th or so row, I will stop and measure just to make sure that I'm not making it too long because my rows aren't exactly one centimeter, so I don't want to make it too wide. So I'm going to be changing color on this last stitch. Bring in my pink. And now I'm just going to continue double crocheting back and forth in rows until I hit that 15 centimeter point. Ultimately, I ended up crocheting 14 rows of pink for this stripe because that got me closer to 15 centimeters just because my rows aren't quite one centimeter each. At this point, I'm going to change to my final color, which is the black. So bring that in and I'm just going to change color. Originally, I was going to make the black stripe the same as the green, so that would have been 10 rows. However, I've decided I want it to be a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do to finish off is just do eight rows of double crochet in the black. That is row number eight of my black strip done, or row 75 overall. And all I'm going to do at this point is leave a yarn tail, which I can weave in to secure later on. And with that, our back panel is complete. Now that we've finished our back panel, we're going to go on and crochet our two front panels. 
The front panels are going to be the same length as the back panel. For me, that means I'm going to be doing rows 1 to 43 in white, rows 44 to 53 in green, rows 54 to 67 in pink, and row 68 to 75 in black. Your mileage may vary, it depends on how long you made your back panel. The difference between the back panel and the front panels is only in the width, and you're going to have to figure out how wide you want your front panels to be. I'm going with half the size of the back panel, minus two centimeters. And once you've got the width figured out, you're then going to do the same thing we did at the start of our back panel. You're going to begin chaining and stop every so often to measure the length of your chain until you reach the exact measurement you want. I've actually skipped ahead a bit because when I was doing the chaining for my back panel, I worked out my measurement in advance. So I already know that for my front panels, I'm going to need to chain 43 so I can work 40 double crochet in each row. And 43, once I've got my 43, I'm going to start in the fourth chain from the hook. And I'm going to place my first double crochet. And as I mentioned earlier, from this point, all I'm going to do is crochet the same number of rows I did for my back panel. Now that we've crocheted our back panel and our front panel, we're going to make the sleeve. And with the sleeve, you're going to need three measurements. You're going to need the shoulder measurement, you're going to need the length of the sleeve, and you're going to need the width of the end of the sleeve, if you're planning to make the end of the sleeve wider than the shoulder. I've actually decided to make the shoulder of my sleeve the same width as my back panel and that was 44 centimeters. This will make it fairly loose and baggy but that's the look I'm going for with the Howry sleeves. That means that for this portion I don't need to do any measuring, I'm just going to chain the same amount I did for my back panel. However, if you choose to make the sleeve width measurement different from your back panel, all you will need to do in that case is repeat what we did originally. Take the measurement that you want to start out with, for example, 20 centimeters, probably going to be a little bit small, but this is just an example. You're going to begin chaining and you're going to stop when you reach 20 centimeters. So that might reach, I don't know, 30 chains, for example, and you can stop there and then just add the additional chains you'll need for your turning chain. How many you do there is going to depend on what kind of stitch you're working with. Let's grab my white yarn and I'm going to chain the same amount as I did for my back panel, as I said previously, and for me, that is 88. Eighty-seven and 88. That is my foundation chain done. Where the sleeve is going to differ from the back and front panels is the length and the number of rows I'm going to be doing for each color. I've worked out that my sleeve is going to be roughly 55 centimeters long and sticking with the one row of my double crochet equals roughly one centimeter. That means I need to aim for about 55 rows. At this stage, I'm looking at doing 30 rows in white, seven in green, 11 in pink, and seven more in black. That only gets me to 53 rows, but I thought I'd do it a little bit less than a little bit more because what I learned from using this method in my other panels was that because my stitches aren't quite one centimeter, they're slightly under, it's better to go with less rows than more. So I'm going to go with 53 rows. I think that might get me closer to the 55 centimeters. 
and if it's a little bit off it's not going to matter too much because I'm only a couple of rows out. It doesn't really matter if the sleeve stops exactly at my wrist. The only other difference with the sleeve that we're going to be crocheting is that we're going to be doing some increases in several rows to get that flared effect. If you don't want your sleeve to flare out you're not going to make any increases just keep crocheting back and forth in rows until you reach your desired length but at the moment I'm planning to do three increases in my sleeve about every 15 or so rows and I'm going to increase by putting a double crochet increase at the start and the end of the row and I think this will give me just a subtle widening of the sleeve I don't want anything too dramatic so that's why I've only chosen to go with three increases but you can customize this to your taste. If you'd like a really dramatic effect, you can put more increases. And as I mentioned just before, if you don't want any flare at all, don't add any increases. And now that I've got that all worked out, I'm going to begin row one. And for the first probably 15 or so rows, I'm going to be working in white and working 85 double crochet back and forth across my rows until I get to the row that I'll need to increase at. I've completed 19 rows in the white so far and what I'm going to do in row 20 is my first increase. I'm going to be increasing by putting a double crochet increase in the first stitch which I will do now and to make an increase I'm just going to put two double crochet in the same stitch and then I'm just going to double crochet all the way along my row until I reach the last stitch and I'm going to do another double crochet increase there. That is how I plan to do my increase rows. If you feel that your sleeve needs some additional increases you can just pop a few more anywhere you like along the row here and I think I mentioned before that I only plan to increase three times in this entire sleeve just because I don't really want the sleeve to end up huge. And as I've placed this increase row at row number 20, I'm probably going to place my second increase row somewhere around row 35. And now that I have one stitch left, I'm just going to pop another increase in right at the end here. And that is row 20 finished. I'm going to continue crocheting in rows and I'll increase once more when I hit about row 35. I'm currently up to row 35 and I'm going to make this my second increase row and I'm going to do that the same way I did my previous increase row. I'm going to place a double crochet increase at the start of the row and another at the end of the row and after that I'm just going to keep crocheting until I reach row 50 which is going to be my third and final increase row. Finally up to round 50 and it's here that I'm going to do my third increase row. Again I'm just putting in, forgot to chain, one, two and three and I'm just going to be putting in an increase at the start and the end of the row. And after that I've only got a few more rows to go until I've finished the sleeve. And that's the final row of the sleeve done. When you finish crocheting your first three pieces, you'll then need to crochet yourself a second front panel and a second sleeve. The next thing we're going to do is start putting our pieces together and you can do this one of two ways. You can either sew them together or single crochet them together and it is the single crochet that I'm going to go with. Begin by laying your back panel down on a flat surface with the right side facing up and the right side is 
the good side, the bit that will be facing outwards while you're wearing it. You're then going to take your two side panels and with the right sides facing down, you're going to line those up with the outer edges of the black panel. So you'll have the left front panel flush with the left side of the back panel and the right front panel flush with the opposite side. So at this point, we have the right sides of our front and back panels together. Once you've done that, you're going to sew these pieces together across the top of the shoulder. Now, as you can see, I've attached this piece to the top and I'm going to do the same for the piece I just dropped, which is this one. So I'm going to make sure that the right sides are together. And then I'm just going to use some stitch markers to keep these pieces together. I find it a lot easier to crochet them together that way. They're not moving all over the place. And for the moment, let's just go ahead and ignore all this. I happen to be doing some Halloween stuff at the moment. And once they're all together, we can go ahead and start the attaching process. I'm going to grab my hook and I'm going to work my way from the outside here to the inside. I'm going to insert my hook through the front panel in the last stitch and then out of the last stitch of the back panel and I'll just remove this stitch marker now. Just make sure I've gone in through the right stitches. I'm then going to grab my white yarn. I'm going to line that up behind the head of my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through and then I'm going to slip stitch to join. I'm then going to go back into those two same stitches. I'm going through the front panel and out of the back panel. And then I'm going to single crochet. From this point, I'm going to jump down to the next stitch in my front panel. I'm going to go out of the next stitch in my top panel, my back panel. And I'm going to single crochet again. And like this, I'm just going to make my way across the top of the front panel and then I'm going to stop when I get to the end of it. When you're done, just cut a length of yarn. You want this, I made that way too long, but you want this long enough that you'll be able to weave it in to secure it. And then we're going to do the same with the left panel. So I'm going to join my yarn here and I'm going to single crochet my way across. And then I'm just joining the exact same way. I'm going into the last stitches of both pieces. I'm going to bring in my white yarn, then slip stitch. And just begin single crocheting. And then we're just going to do the same thing when we get to the end. You're going to cut a length of yarn long enough to weave in and just pull up with your hook. And we'll take care of these ends later on. After you've attached the front panels to the back panel, we're then going to attach the sleeve. But before we do that, what I would recommend you do is take your sleeves and at the top, mark out the center with a stitch marker. So I've done the first one and then I'm going to do the second and there is the middle. So I had 85 double crochet or 85 stitches across. So I'm just going to put my stitch marker in the 43rd stitch, which is pretty much dead in the middle. After you've done that, you want to make sure that like with our front and back panels when we attach those, that the wrong sides of your sleeve are facing upwards. So the wrong side of my sleeve is this side here. So I'm going to put that on my lap so it's facing upwards. I'm going to do the same with my second sleeve. So wrong side facing upwards. We're then going to grab our front and back panels, which should be attached at this point. And with the wrong sides still on the outside, so you can see here the single crochets where I've joined them together. This is going to be the inside of the piece when I'm wearing it. You're going to unfold it. So I'm unfolding it. 
And then you're going to take one of your sleeve panels and you're going to line up that stitch marker we just placed in the center right on the join where we've crocheted the front and the back panels together. So that's going to go right there. And I'm going to grab some more stitch markers and I'm just going to pin or stitch mark these pieces together along the side here. Okay, now that's all stitched, marked, stitch marked together. So you can see that. So that is half on the front panel here and then half on the back panel here. And again, all my wrong sides are facing up. What I'm going to do now is grab my white yarn and my hook. So I've got those here. And I'm going to single crochet these pieces together, same way I did for, the, for joining the front and back panel. I'll just insert my hook, getting a little tangled here. Okay, I'm going to insert my hook through the end, working into both pieces. I'm going to join my yarn with a slip stitch and I'm just going to single crochet all the way along. And I'm actually wondering at this stage if my sleeves are going to be a little bit too big. I wanted them fairly wide, but I might have overreached a little bit, but we can see soon when I get to try it on. So we're just going to stitch these together first. And now that that first sleeve's done, I'm just going to cut a length of yarn so I can weave that in to secure the end. Pull up. And then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite sleeve. You're going to grab, where is it? Grab it. Make sure that the wrong side is facing up. Line up your center stitch marker with the join between the front and back panels. Pin it together and then single crochet the two pieces to join them. And that is the second sleeve finished. So at this point we have all our pieces attached. The next step is going to be to crochet the sides together. And we will be crocheting from the wrist up along the arm and then down the side. So to put your piece together, you're going to fold the sleeves in half. This is what it looks like as it is now. We're going to fold that in half and I'll just put one stitch marker at the end there for now. You're going to follow that along. So you can see here, our sleeve is folded in half all the way up until you get to the underarm, which is this point here. So if I hold that out, that's the front. And then when we reach that point under the arm, we're going to single crochet all the way down the side, single crocheting the front panel and the back panel together at the sides. So that is our next step. We're going to do that on both sides. Once more, my Howry has the wrong sides facing out, so it's inside out at this point. And we're going to keep it that way until we finish single crocheting the sides together. For this, what I've done is grabbed out all my colors. So I've got my three colors here and my white there because I'm going to single crochet the pieces together in their corresponding colors. I'm going to single crochet the black together with black, pink together with pink, green together with green, white together with white. You probably don't have to do this, but I'm just going to do it so it looks a little bit neater. You won't see any white stitches peeking through the black or anything like that. I'm going to begin by using my stitch markers again, just to pin all these pieces together and make sure that all my lines are in line. <laughs> Once 
when I get to the armpit, I'm going to make sure that the joins align. So this is one end of where we single crochet the sleeve to the, what's this, the, the front panel. And the other end is where we single crochet the sleeve to the back panel. And I'm going to make sure that those line up. And then I'm just going to continue pinning down the side so my front and back panels are together. Okay, that's the last stitch marker. Because I'm already at the bottom of my piece, I'm going to work my way up the side, under the arm, and then down the sleeve. You can start in the opposite direction, doesn't really matter. Just pick whichever end you'd like. And that is one side complete, totally single crocheted together there. We're then going to do the same thing, but on the opposite side. So start by pinning your sides together, then single crochet up the side and then under the arm and down the sleeve or the opposite direction if you'd prefer. When you've crocheted or sewed your Harry's pieces together, you're then going to turn it the right way out. So the seams should be on the inside now. And what we're going to do at this point is add the details. And I've brought you back here to my little crochet space because it's a little bit easier to see. And we're going to start off by adding the black lines to give it the, the butterfly sort of look. And I'm going to start right down the bottom here. And what I'm going to be doing is just following as best I can the design I came up with at the start and you can do that too you can wing this no pun intended or you can google the howry and try and follow along with that but all I'm going to do is grab my black yarn and I'm going to insert my crochet hook where I want the first stripe to start and I'm just going to insert this in the space between the stitches, starting in the black and then going up under the first pink row there. I'm going to bring in my black yarn, going to yarn over, pull that through and then slip stitch to join. And to create the lines, I'm just going to continue slip stitching. I'll just make my way up my work going in through the space between the rows. And make as many lines as I want. I'll be starting off by making sort of the main branches. And then when I have those in position, I'll come back and do the little arms that go off the main branches. I hope that makes sense. But if you're looking at a picture, you probably know what I mean. When you've finally finished crocheting all of your black lines, we're then going to weave in all these ends. Fortunately, in a big brain move, which is unusual for me, I actually weaved in my ends as I went. So I've only got a few here to do, which is good because I hate weaving in ends. And that is the final end that I need to weave in. All we have to do at this point is to create the white spots for the end of our sleeves and the bottom of our hairy. You can do this numerous ways, but what I've chosen to do is to crochet some white spots 
and then sew those on but you could always go with a felting needle and some roving wool or even just cutting out some felt and sewing that on what i might do is when i create the spots i'm not sure at this stage how many i'm going to make but i will put all the patterns for those down in the description or the pinned comment so if you would like to crochet your own you can follow along with that but before i do that i need to come up with some patterns for those spots and that's going to be and that's going to be my next step we're getting so close to finishing this thing i can't wait I'm going to crochet these spots in the round and basically all I'm doing is throwing in some random stitches to change up their shape. I'm going to crochet five different sizes in total ranging from small to large but I'm going to crochet myself more of the smaller ones than the larger ones because I think I'm going to need more of those. When they're all crocheted I'll arrange them into a pattern that I think looks relatively nice on the black parts of my Harry. And after that, I'll begin the tedious process of pinning them all in place. When that's done though, I'll begin sewing. And this sewing is the last thing that we actually need to do before our howry is complete. What do you think? I am pretty happy with this thing overall. Not too bad for my second ever attempt at making clothes, I think. I really like how the colors go together. I am super glad that I changed out that corally color for the pink. I really like how these work together. But I think my favorite thing about this is the butterfly details, the black lines and the white spots. I know I based it off an already existing design, but I just love how those details sort of bring it all together. Very nice. It actually fits a lot better than I expected it to. I know I measured myself in the beginning, but still in the back of my mind, there's always this worry that I'm not doing it right. I didn't measure myself right, or I threw myself off somehow with my stitches. But to actually get to the end and find that it fits, is really good. The one change I would make though is to the sleeves. I do think I made them a little bit too large, which is accurate to the character's design, I think. But in reality, they're just not practical and I can see them giving me the absolute shits if I wear this for an extended period of time. So that is one change I would make. Another thing I would like to change next time because I do actually plan to attempt another Demon Slayer inspired Howry. Not sure which character I want to go with yet, but if you have any suggestions, leave those down in the comments. But the other change I would make is to, and I can still do this, I can, it's not like I can't do it on this one, but I would either single crochet or slip stitch around the inner edge here, so up the sides and around the neckline, just to give this a bit of a neater finish because it's a little bit bumpy from the double crochets, but just to neaten that up, as a finishing touch I think would be good. Another thing I would like to do next time is to block all the panels separately before I sew them together because this one I did plan to block this now that I finished it but it may be easier to do that beforehand when they're all individual parts. But those are just some minor critiques, little changes I might make. Overall I'm super happy with how this turned out. I keep getting distracted admiring the butterfly pattern. <laughs> I already have a couple more clothing projects in the works, excluding the other Howry that I want to make. So I look forward to sharing all of those with you too. If you happen to make your own version of this, please feel free to share it with me over on Instagram, TikTok, Tumblr, wherever you happen to lurk on the internet. But that is all I have for you in this video. Thank you for sticking around to the end and watching if you did so. Subscribe if you're interested. Share the video if you think it's worth sharing. And I will see you all next week with my new pattern.